As the founder of Amplify, Lars, what tips do you have for the 21st century HR people? Yeah, I mean, I think if you're a practitioner of 21st century HR, there's, there's a variety of things that I think separate you from your you know, legacy oriented peers. Um, you know, one, I think that you are, the, the, one of the core elements of kind of legacy HR is this idea of a command and control structure where HR wanted to kind of own and run and, and be the, the, you know, the, the approver, if you will, for lots of programs within the organization. And, and I think the view there was that was a, a path to power for the CHRO. Um, and what it did is the downside of that is it uh, oftentimes it gave HR a bad rap of, of always being kind of involved and inserting themselves where they didn't necessarily need to be. And I think if you look at 21st century HR, it's a very different view. The, the 21st century HR leaders are business people, they're business leaders that focus on people. They understand the financials, they understand the marketing strategy, they understand the go-to-market strategy. And I think from, uh, you know, they, they are able to kind of synthesize all of that knowledge and understanding into a people strategy. So their, their view tends to be, let's create frameworks and programs for our people to do their best work, and then let's empower them to do that. You know, they don't have to, there's not an insecurity around feeling you need to insert yourself into that process you know you it's just not it's not there and so i think that tends to be a lot more successful and you know another piece is in kind of legacy oriented organizations and personnel oriented organizations oftentimes from a point uh it was based on you know risk mitigation so you would build policies uh against the few as opposed to today in 21st century hr it's policies for the many and that's a big distinction because you're assuming best intent. You're assuming that you're hiring adults and people that are going to make good choices. And if you find that an individual doesn't do that, then you address that on an individual basis. But you don't create a policy around what might be the worst case scenario um, to, you know, kind of restrict everybody for what might happen. And, uh, you know, those are two things that definitely stand out to me in terms of. Those you know, are great terms, tips. Thank you for those. Stars. 21st century. Yeah. And what about uh, company culture and employee engagement? Do you think that it falls on the shoulders of HR or it should be overall the whole company should be involved in those areas? The whole company. I mean, HR, I think when it comes to, uh, when it comes to culture and engagement programs, um, you know, HR can be kind of the conductor, right? So it, it's the role of HR to help create programs to help create initiatives that allow the culture to be built from the employees, you know, culture customs, things like that. But it's not the idea that a, a CHRO owns culture is short-sighted. Um, you know, the executive team, the employees, everybody owns culture. And I think it's the role of HR to create programs and, uh, and kind of, you know, incentivize behaviors that help about allow that culture to flourish. Um, but it's not something that you know they own or that they they manage. I totally agree with that. It should come from the top, from the CEO or the founder. If it's like walking the talk, talk uh, you know, walking the talk and not just yeah. talking it, so that it can reflect that uh, even the CEO is doing all those uh, culture and employee engagement, and that will motivate uh, people working there to stay there and not get uh, and stay there and not go other places when they are offering other jobs. Yeah, look, I mean, if the executives aren't living the values, if they don't show up in their day to day and how they interact with each other and how they interact with employees and how they lead the organization, it's going to have no credibility. And, uh, and, and employees are not going to be able to kind of rally around something like that because they're not going to feel that it's authentic. I totally agree. Again, thank you for those great tips, Lars. And for the audience watching, if you have any other tips for the HR people like us, uh, please leave it in the comments section. Uh, like and share the video, subscribe to the channel and tune in tomorrow for my final question with us.